The international break is finally over and the Premier League has returned. Wanda strikes, two goal comebacks, and that was just the Everton match. But what you may have missed this weekend, in the thick of all the action, is the fact it was actually a record-breaking weekend for the Premier League. And no, I'm not talking about Erling Haaland. It was, in fact, Premier League referees who stole the spotlight this weekend. <coughs> Anthony Taylor. <laughs> Officials set a new Premier League record of 65 yellow cards in a match day. The North London derby set the record for the most yellow cards in the first half, with seven. And Chelsea versus Bournemouth set a record for the most yellow cards in a Premier League match, with 14, not including both managers, who also received bookings. This got me thinking, why have there been so many yellow cards? Is there a trend here? And what does it mean for the league moving forwards? To start with, I needed some data. So I decided to look back at the three previous Premier League seasons and see how many bookings have been awarded by this point in the season. Starting off with the 22-23 season, 150 yellow cards have been dished out by this point in the season. Moving forward to last season, there was a 38 card increase, reaching a number of 188 yellow cards by this point. Now, bringing it forward to this season, we currently stand at 197 yellow cards dished out to Premier League clubs. Now, I'm aware this is quite a small sample size, but it does provide us a view into a season-on-season -season increase in yellow cards. Now, there may be a couple of factors for this, such as the added time increase last season, obviously providing players with more time on the pitch, therefore more of a chance to pick up yellow cards. And also referees punishing players more harshly for things like dissent and time wasting. There are a few more statistics that back up the fact that we are seeing more and more yellow cards each season. One being out of the top four most carded Premier League teams ever, three of those were last season. And last season also saw the most yellow cards ever handed out in a season. The strange thing about this game week, and you may have heard commentators say this if you were watching a couple of the games, is none of them were more physical or more rough. There were no more injuries than there may usually be. So why were referees handing out cards like it was Christmas? Particularly in the Chelsea game, there were a lot of yellow cards for dissent and things like that. And obviously we don't know what's been said there, but there seemed to be no more gesticulating and shouting general aggressive behavior than usual. And if you watch this and were listening to the commentary, it became a running joke, the amount of yellow cards Anthony Taylor was handing out. He was handing them out for dissent, for time wasting, for all sorts. I, I think he lost control of the game personally. The North London derby is a little bit more explainable, it, well, it's a derby, and there was that little scrap that you had between Timber and Vicario, but nothing to suggest seven yellow cards in a first half of a game, again, a Premier League record. So what was it this weekend? I've seen some Arsenal fans suggesting on Twitter that it may have been due to the double yellow card that Declan Rice received last week, getting sent off, which I thought was very harsh. But that can't be all there is to it. Right, I'm back, it's a new day, and I'm gonna pick up where I left off, starting with the pros and cons of more yellow cards in the Premier League. First off, a couple of the obvious cons are disrupting the flow of a game. Yellow cards with a referee constantly blowing up for small fouls and handing out cards, it's bound to slow down the game, which can suit some of the smaller sides every now and again. But generally as a spectator, it's not what you wanna see. Next, officials will lose control of games. The more yellow cards you're handing out, the more the crowd gets on your back, the more pressure you feel. You're bound to as an official. I was an official myself for a couple of years, nowhere near this level. But more yellow cards handed out, there's more pressure on the officials. That's common sense. The next con on my list is more suspensions. And of course, with more yellow cards comes more suspensions. Whether that be cumulatively, picking up 5, 10 or 15 yellow cards in a season, or double yellows. But ultimately, it's the big teams that are going to benefit from this, with better squad depth. If Man City or Chelsea or any of the other big teams pick up an injury, you've got great replacements that can come in straight away. And in general, this will help the big six. Now my final con that I could think of, and let me know if I've missed any, is just players and managers generally approaching the game with more caution. You get less of a full throttle game if the referee is so unpredictable that you've got to bring your best player off the moment he gets a yellow card. Maybe that's down to the temperament of the player sometimes, but also managers aren't going to want to take risks. Especially having seen what happened to Declan Rice the other week. 
Managers now know that players can pick up yellow cards for almost anything, no matter how small the action is. But that's enough of all my negativity. Now, moving on to some pros. The first of my pros, of course, is with more yellow cards and more powerful referees, in theory, should come less reckless play and harsh challenges, meaning less injuries for the league and players are protected a little bit more. Now, my next positive is going to divide opinion, but when you create a less physical game with more yellow cards being handed out, you give an opportunity to those players with more skill to be able to take advantage of that, of players on yellow cards, players that have already picked up bookings early on in the game and are less likely to be able to dive in, knowing that the referee will happily dish out that second yellow, in theory. And finally, and this may be the point of all these yellow cards in the short term, is long term you create a more disciplined game where players who are coming through youth structures now will have more discipline and respect for referees. I think that's probably what PGMOL are trying to get at with these rules. So in 10 years time, when you see players who are now in youth academies coming through, they may be more likely to respect referees' decisions if they know they're going to receive a booking and have done for the past 10 years for dissent and time wasting you may just see a more disciplined game moving forward. Feel free to let me know if you disagree with any of the points I've made in my pros or cons list, or perhaps I've missed one. But you can't argue it does raise some interesting questions for the Premier League over the next five to 10 years. While making this video, I had to ask myself, why is this relevant? What questions does it raise for the Premier League and us as spectators? Now I've come up with a few and I'm gonna to try to answer them the best I can. First off, are referees losing control over games? And are we giving them too much power? As any English football fan will tell you, right up and down through the pyramid, the standard of officiating leaves a lot to be desired. And by giving these referees more power now, is that really a position we want to put ourselves in when we're not already comfortable with the level of officiating going on? You've got to upgrade the referees and perhaps their training before you can give them extra powers to dole out yellow cards all over the place. The next question is, will this improve discipline in the Premier League in the long term? And for me, it's a maybe. A big problem I've had with referees for a long time is their unwillingness to hand out second yellow cards to players who deserve them. Whether that be that they're afraid that the crowd will get on their back or the managers will give them stick or they don't want to be talked about in the press. But if you're not willing to hand out second yellow cards, then the first yellow card is basically meaningless. There have been many instances where players have deserved second yellow cards in recent weeks and not got them. So unless we start seeing true punishment for players that are offending already on bookings, then no, it won't approve discipline in the Premier League because there's no real consequences to making a second yellow card challenge. Now finally, and in my opinion most crucially, the thing that should be at the heart of all lawmaking in football is does it make the game a better spectacle? Does it improve the product of the Premier League? Will it improve attacking play? Will players be able to get on the ball more and drive at opponents when the opponents have the fear of picking up a second yellow card? Only time will tell, but for now it seems to be slowing down the game a lot and changing the conversation when it should be about a fantastic match onto a referee that has spoiled it with their ego, such as Anthony Taylor did on the weekend. And that's not what any of us want to see. So let me know what you think are your answers to those questions. Will it improve the Premier League as a spectacle? Are referees being given too much power? And will discipline improve in the Premier League long term? Now, that's all I've got to say on the matter. But if you disagree with anything I've said in this video or think I've missed anything perhaps, feel free to let me know. I think it's an interesting debate because the amount of yellow cards going up season on season, there's bound to be some consequences for it at some point, And it's bound to fundamentally change the game in the Premier League. This has been a topic I haven't seen debated too much online yet particularly by the mainstream media. So add your voice to the conversation. Thank you for watching. I've been Ethan Moss-Wills. This has been my first video. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time.